Here are four ways to improve your game sense and decision making. Presented by Fortnite Master. For this video, we decided to dive into one topic we feel our collection of guides is missing. One of the most vague but important parts of being good at Fortnite, game sense. We say it's vague because game sense is typically something that players have without thinking about and something that's not easy to put into words. But in this video, we try to break down game sense into its main parts, explaining each and giving some tips for improvement. Without wasting any more time, let's get started. The first aspect of game sense we want to go over is decision making. This concept is pretty broad, so we're going to break it down further into decision making at the macro and micro level. We're going to start with the macro level, by which we mean the larger scale decisions you make throughout the game, like when and where to rotate and knowing the best thing to do at any time during the game, whether it's farming, looting, or getting into a good position. Macro level decision making is one of the easiest parts of game sense to practice because most of the decisions are made to get closer to basic priorities, which you can pick up on pretty easily. Three of the most common ones you'll find yourself working towards are simple things like farming more mats, getting more loot, or hunting for kills. As long as you're able to prioritize which is important at any given time, decision making on the macro level is relatively easy. For example, Having at least 300 mats, at least 150 effective health, and a base loadout like an AR and shotgun should probably be your top three priorities. If any of these aren't met, like you don't have enough mats, your decision for where to rotate should be somewhere where you can get mats without much risk of fighting. Once your top priorities are fulfilled, you can start making decisions based off things like hunting for kills. Game sense at the micro level, by which we mean all of those split second decisions you make every fight, is much more difficult in Fortnite. In fights, there are always so many options, and there isn't really a delay on building, editing, or switching weapons, so you can always do things as fast as you can click the buttons. Fortnite is so complicated, we could probably fill an entire video plus some with different examples of cool decisions or effective prioritization at the micro level. But nothing will be as good as you understanding, learning, and improving on your own. So we're just going to give one example, then explain how to approach improving your game sense. One of the most important decisions at the micro level is when to build and when to shoot. I'm sure you've heard of streamers or YouTubers complaining about overbuilding, or maybe you've experienced yourself running into a player who only built without shooting back. This is an extreme example, but it shines a light on how important it is to know when to build and when to shoot. Our best advice is to remember that your main goal in a lot of scenarios is to eliminate the other player, and building is just a means to an end, something to help you achieve that goal. So once you take high ground, you should immediately be looking for shots, not building up an extra three levels. If somebody is trying to contest your height, try to find an opportunity for a quick shot before building up to keep height. There are also situations in which building is just better, like when you're fighting multiple people, high ground becomes incredibly important. It's all about figuring out your priorities and training your gut reactions to be the correct play as much as possible. Over time, you'll build up and improve upon this gut feeling for which things are more important in certain situations and at certain points in the game. This is a large part of what we call game sense. As for how to improve, you can watch others gameplay and expand on your game sense. When watching one of your favorite streamers or YouTubers, try anticipating their decisions, and if they do something different than you would have, try and think about why. Doing this will help you improve a lot. Just remember to apply what you learned next time you play. Of course, you can also reflect on your own gameplay to improve your game sense. Although it may be hard, try to keep emotions out of it and truly analyze what you could have done better instead of making excuses. If a decision you regularly make often leads to death, like pushing outside the circle to storm fight, you may want to rethink it. Take note of when during the game you're dying the most and make adjustments accordingly. If you are constantly dying off spawn, maybe change your drop to somewhere a little less popular. Awareness is another major aspect of game sense. We're talking about things like tracking enemies accurately even when you can't see them, predicting players' movements and plays, and generally having a good game sense of what's going on around you. You should always try to have a mental map of what's going on around you to track other players and threats, even if you can't see them. You can use things like visual and audio cues to help create this map, as well as your own predictions for what players will do. 
For example, let's say you're fighting a player who's turtling and you're trying to take their wall, but about 20 seconds earlier, you hear some shots off in the distance to your east. You should have the awareness to build some cover on your east side while you try to claim the wall, in case the team you heard earlier decides to look your way. In this example, the shots you heard off in the distance to your east are something that you should remember in the back of your mind that can contribute to your mental map and overall awareness. This example is just one piece of information that might contribute to your mental map. In every fight you take, however, you should be using tens, if not hundreds, of these little cues to create your mental map that will inform your decision making. Now let's say you're pretty good at maintaining an accurate mental map of players' movements and positions. It's time to start anticipating those movements and catch them off guard. One thing you'll see the best players do constantly is predict where the enemy is going next, wait at that angle, and then shoot them immediately when they walk into it. Even if the enemy is aware and tries to protect that angle as fast as they can, you'll often still get a shot because you anticipated it and were waiting. This is all about game sense, and a big reason why game sense is so important in Fortnite. Improving your ability to create these mental maps and predict players' movements is difficult, but not impossible. Experience is the main thing that will help. Simply put, the more you play the game, the better you'll be at tracking enemies and maintaining good awareness. Other than that, we'd recommend consciously trying to track and predict players' movements in-game. Actively try to track players' positions and guess what they'll do next. If you're correct, then you're on the right track. If not, try looking back on why you made your prediction, as well as what they did differently and why. Once you get good at creating mental maps and predicting players' movements, most of this stuff becomes second nature, so you won't need to actively think about it, you'll just do it subconsciously. Positioning is the third major aspect of game sense we're going to explain. By this, we mean how to position yourself relative to others in fights, during rotations, and even when you're camping. We want to start with positioning during fights, and we don't mean build fighting to take high ground, which has more to do with micro level decision making. We're more so talking about where you're positioned relative to your opponent, as well as any third parties. For example, let's say you're boxed up and a player is pressuring your box from the south side, when a third party starts spraying your box from the north. While the player to your north might not be close enough to do a ton of damage yet, you are still pinched and need to reposition as fast as possible. If one player is directly between two others, it's only natural that the two players will team up on the player in the middle, so you need to reposition to where you're not pinched, or to where one of the players is pinched between you and the third party. Positioning well relative to other players, not just the one you're fighting directly, is always a smart idea, because it mitigates the pressure put onto you. This ties back into decision making too. In the example we just explained, as soon as you hear the third party, your priorities immediately shift from eliminating the player in front of you to repositioning so you're not pinched. Or let's say the player in front of you is literally one shot. Finishing them off as quickly as possible so you can focus on 1v1ing the third party might be the play. It all depends on circumstances. Positioning is also incredibly important when it comes to rotations. This is less where to rotate and more how you get there. Unless you're the type of player who makes rotations with the sole purpose of hunting for kills, positioning on rotations is usually about getting into the circle in the safest way possible. Generally, you want to stay towards the outer edges of the circle and take wide rotations to get in as safe as possible. You also want to pay attention to each game's bus route and the most popular drop spots. Using this information, you can guess where some of the players are rotating from. Lastly, watch out for other players that are rotating or are already in the circle so you don't get pinched. As for how to improve, it really just comes down to experience and trial and error. Just like improving your decision making, you can improve your positioning by reflecting on your own gameplay and looking at how your positioning may have affected the outcome. You can also watch other players and analyze how their positioning is benefiting them, and how slash why it's different than yours. Try thinking about things like how you could have positioned yourself differently in a third party situation, or what the biggest obstacle for rotating into the zone safely was. Once you start asking yourself these questions and coming up with good answers, you'll start seeing improvement. Knowledge is the last main part of game sense. Your game knowledge is what helps informs your decision making, awareness, and positioning. This can range from simple stuff like choosing which guns or healing items are preferable in any given situation to more difficult things like always knowing where the closest campfire is on the map or using your knowledge of a drop spot to perfectly optimize a looting slash farming route for speed and efficiency. 
One main aspect of the game that knowledge directly affects is your callouts when you're playing with teammates. And even when you're playing solo, sometimes making callouts of important information in your head will help you remember things. Callouts in game can vary from major things like a third party joining the fight to minor details like the type of weapon an enemy has. Imagine you're fighting a team off in the distance and trying to land some AR shots when your teammate calls out they have a sniper. You're probably going to be more careful and quicker with your peaks knowing that. Or, let's say it's early game and you notice somebody has a drum gun while you have a combat. You might consider pushing them to press the advantage while you still have it. Or, maybe you notice that two teams just got done fighting and the remaining team seems to be healing up. It's best if you push that advantage right away before they get the chance to reset. These examples also show how your game knowledge informs your decision making. One more example of how game knowledge can affect your positioning this time. Let's say it's endgame and the circles are getting smaller and you're in a standoff with another player. You're both taking some AR shots at medium range, but neither is willing to push. Instead of pushing recklessly, consider waiting to see where the next circle will go and rotating into the best spot on natural high ground. As the circles get smaller in endgame, they become much more effective at putting pressure on players and forcing them into awkward positions. And if you're able to grab the best spot right away when the next circle appears, you can spend your time pressuring the other player with an advantage this time because they're trying to rotate with the circle at their back. Improving your game knowledge is similar to improving every part of your game sense. It just takes time and critical thinking. Play games, think about why you died and what piece of information could have changed the outcome and analyze others as gameplay if you're really serious. Over time, you'll build a solid foundation of game knowledge that you can use to help inform your decision making, awareness and positioning. The four aspects of game sense we've discussed all relate to each other in some way. Decision making has to do with every single one, as does game knowledge. Awareness and position relate to each other pretty closely too. That's why game sense is so complicated and hard to explain. There are so many different moving parts that all work together to help you create a sense of what's going on around you and the best plays to make. Thank you guys for watching this video. For those who are new to the channel, if you've enjoyed this video, check out some of the others on the right side of the screen. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell to get notifications for whenever a new guide shows up. You guys are great and we hope to keep making videos that you all like. From over here at Fortnite Master, my name is The Saved One and we're out. Peace.